Right, Undertale. We've all heard of it, I presume, if you clicked on this video, so I'm not going to sit here and explain it to you. I mean, that's just a waste of both our time. And if you're that one guy who doesn't know what I'm talking about, well, uh, tough luck. Not my problem, is it, mate? Anyway, look at this screenshot of the game and uh, tell me. Uh, what, what do you think? What do you think of it? Yeah, looks shocking, doesn't it? I mean, come on, if we're being honest, it kind of does. Although, while we're being honest, my games don't look great either. It's not laziness, it's just uh, realism, yeah. And if you say otherwise, you are cyberbullying me. Okay, okay, yeah, you know what, you're right, I'm not really one to talk. Especially since this game made millions of dollars and, and mine just made my parents cry. But listen, right, listen. Today, I'm going to prove them wrong, right? I'm going to prove I can make a good looking game by upgrading Undertale to look properly wicked in 3D. Although, obviously, right, let's calm down a bit. I'm not going to remake the whole game. That will take ages and this video would be like 50 hours long. Can't be doing that, can we? So instead, we got to pick one section of the game to remake. Which is such a difficult choice, there's so many amazing and memorable moments. We're doing the sand fight. What? What else did you expect? What, the damn mad dummy battle? Come on, don't take the piss, mate. You're the dummy if you think I'm doing anything other than the sands battle. I mean, come on, it's the best part of the whole game. Now, the first step to making a 3D game is to make some 3D models. I mean, yeah, you, you can't really skip that part, can ya? Don't know why I've got Unity open. Right, that's better. We're going to start with the main character, Chara. So what I did was I made a little sketch and basically used that sketch as like a sort of blueprint for my model. Because I thought, you know, that might make the final product look a bit more accurate and not shit. And to be honest, that went pretty well, actually. I mean, it's not every day one of my ideas work. Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm overselling myself. It didn't work out perfectly. I still had, you know, a little problem. How the hell do you make a 3D model of hair? I tried sculpting it, and it turned out terrible. Spent ages on that too. So what I ended up doing was just modelling each individual hair and then placing them manually. There has got to be a better way to do this. There we go. You know, it actually looks pretty good, I reckon. I'm pretty happy with that. And now, on to everyone's favourite... Ah yes, there he is. And fortunately enough, Sans is bold, so I didn't have any problems there. Then after that, I also made some other models for like the Judgment Hall and the attacks and, and that sort of thing. That stuff's a bit boring though, so we won't dwell on that. So slap this stuff into Unity and it looks shit. Until we add the lighting. There we go, now we're in business, look at that. Right, now, onto the actual gameplay. So, the way I see it, we got two options here. We could do something more like a traditional boss fight, you know, it's like a real-time fight and you move around and, you know, whatever. But I've already done that in the last video, so I reckon what I'm going to have to try and do, just to make it a bit different, is try and emulate the turn-based battle mechanics, but in 3D. So, what I started with was the UI, this stuff here. But the buttons from the real game look a bit rubbish so you know i made my own and to be honest i don't know why i made all of them i mean we, we can only use the fight button we're not going to be using act are we this is the genocide run but whatever i've done it now and after that i added the health bar and you know the other ui elements and since sans always dodges i haven't got to do any damage calculation or anything like that just had to add a little animation for when you attack him and we are done with the player's turn cool now the hard part the bullet hell segments. I started by making the box open with this sick animation. Then I made the heart and I made it move. The, the blue heart mode was a little bit more tricky, you know, since it has gravity and this box is like sideways. Gravity obviously doesn't go that way. But don't worry, I sorted it. I sorted it in the end, don't worry. And at this point, it was going quite smoothly. But then I hit a bit of a problem. I need to hide the attacks before they enter the box. And I struggled at first to try and, you know, figure out how to do this. I started by trying to make them invisible and all sorts of rubbish like that. Long story short, none of it worked. But then, right, listen to this, listen to this. 
I came up with this genius idea, right? So what I did was I made another model of the hall, but just removed one panel on the floor here. And then during the box opening animation, it quickly switches them out and pushes the box down into the hole. And you can't even tell anything's happened. So now, before the attacks enter the box, they're underground and you can't see them. Eh? Eh? How good is that? William, move over mate, you've been outdone. And now, since the Sans fight is notorious for the player dying over and over and over again, you're gonna see this screen a lot. So, I wanted to make it a bit more interesting. I made it so there's like a pile of dead bodies in the background. It's like your previous lives, you know what I mean? And then every time you die, a new body gets added to the pile, and you can like sort of watch it add up every time you die, you know what I mean? I mean, I thought it was a pretty cool idea, pretty creative. And I mean, it's definitely better than the original. Toby Fox made it right boring. It's just a black screen with the words game over on it. Like, come on, mate, put some effort in. Anyway, now all the basics of the bullet segments are in place, but I still haven't started on the most important bit. You know, the actual bullets. Now, there are a couple of different types. You know, the normal ones, they just do damage, nothing special there. And then there's these blue ones that only hurt you when you're moving. And obviously, the gaster blasters. So I've got all these sorted right, but the problem is th they don't move. Uh, that's going to be a bit of a problem, isn't it? Now this is where I will admit I might have to give up that title of world's smartest man. So originally I tried to manually code the attack patterns, and I did that for an embarrassingly long time before I realised you can just move them with an animation. Yeah. Okay, you know what? Yeah, sorry William, mate. Uh, you can have your title back. But anyway, we got there in the end. Alright, the attacks work now. That's all that matters, really. And uh, yeah, I guess that's it. That's the game. But hold on, hold on. Ah, ah, ah. Don't click off the video yet. Alright, calm down. Video's not over. In the last video, I didn't really show much gameplay. I just sort of ended the video. So, uh, yeah, my bad. But listen, right? To make it up to you, I'm going to do you one better. I'm not just going to show you gameplay. I'm gonna make a montage.